Hello and welcome to this video about the life cycle of a star. Now first of all what you would have seen as you're going through this topic at school is that you get this massive flow diagram associated with stars and it's one thing that people find really difficult to remember throughout their exam. So my top tip for you would be to brain dump. Okay, As soon as you get an exam find a bit of white space on the paper or on the back and write down from memory this setup here. Because if later on in the exam questions come up on this, you've already got it in the back and you've already got it um, useful for you to answer the question. Okay, in the first stage then, we've got this protostar right at the beginning. And in this stage, it's the birth of the star. And it's when the dust and the gas are pulled together by gravity. and they form this protostar, this very primitive early star. And sometimes with the protostar you might get smaller um, masses of dust and gas pulling together which may start to orbit the star and these would be planets. So in a similar way when the star forms and dust and gas are getting pulled together you may also get planets forming by the same process at the same time. Then we go on to the main sequence. So after all the dust and gases are putting together, the star goes onto a stage where it stays in for billions of years. And this is the stage that our sun is in at the moment. Our sun is a main sequence, sequence star. And at this stage, we're going to have nuclear fusion occurring. So like we said before, we're going to get hydrogen um, isotopes coming together forming larger elements in this case helium and energy being released so in the middle of the star you've got nuclear fusion which is generating energy and generating a pressure outwards and you have got gravity acting inwards so you've got gravity pulling everything together and an outward pressure from the nuclear fusion pushing outwards. And these forces here are actually balanced. So for billions of years, we've got the gravity pulling it in and the outwards pressure pushing outwards, and these forces are balanced, leaving the star in the same stage for such a long time. And therefore, like our sun now, it maintains a really high energy output. So at this stage here the star is mainly made up of hydrogen but eventually that hydrogen will run out. If the hydrogen is keep um, is fusing together through nuclear fusion creating heavier elements eventually these heavier elements will go on to fuse together to make even bigger elements and this is why the star will start to swell outwards. When it runs out of this hydrogen it will start to swell and there's two different pathways that it could take. If the star is a similar size to the Sun it will take this pathway here on this flow diagram. So this is the pathway for something that is of similar size to our Sun. The, the star itself will start to swell and get bigger and it will make a red giant star. And this is when heavier elements are being formed. We said the hydrogen was running out, heavier elements are being formed up to the size of iron, Fe, okay, or iron. So in this sequence here, we get nuclear fusion still occurring, which is creating a bigger out outwards pressure as the heavier elements are forming, and that star starts to swell. And then after a period of time, the outer layer of this star will shed and you will end up with the hot inside core. So the outer layers are ejected and you end up with this white dwarf in the middle. And eventually this hot white dwarf will cool down and turn into a black dwarf. And then we've got a different pathway for stars which are much bigger than our Sun. Now because they're much bigger they turn into a red supergiant star. 
okay? On the other side, it's just a red giant star. This one we call a red super giant star. And again, we're going to get nuclear fusion and heavier elements up to iron formed in this main stable period that it's in. However, these bigger stars go under a massive explosion called a supernova. And in that explosion, because there's extreme high temperatures and pressure, this is where you get even heavier elements formed. So we said earlier that stars similar size to our sun will make elements up to the size of iron, which is here in the periodic table. So all of these ones here, it can make during nuclear fusion. But it is only in the supernova explosion here that you get elements bigger than iron formed. So all these elements we see on Earth today must have been formed from a supernova. So this here forms elements bigger than iron, again by nuclear fusion, the fusing of um, two atomic nuclear, nuclei. So in exams, they say uh, a common question is, how do we know that our Earth was formed from a supernova? Well, the evidence is that actually on Earth, we've got elements like gold and silver, a lot heavier than iron, and those heavy elements can only be formed from a supernova. So in a supernova, those outer layers will be ejected again, and then you can imagine it going back to this kind of protostar stage where gravity will start pulling in those um, dust and gases in that, in that outer layer to form other stars and planets. And after the supernova explosion then, when the outer layers are ejected, you end up with either a neutron star or a black hole. Now you won't be asked in detail in your exam about these neutron stars and black holes, you just need to remember the pathway that will get to them. So the main thing about this side is that this supernova creates the heavier elements. So in summary then, I would recommend that you brain dump this, okay, you obviously don't need to draw the pictures, but in your exam just quickly scribble down this pathway somewhere as soon as you go in. And I'll give you a couple of tips to try and um, remember this pathway. So the first bit, um, the protostar in the main sequence, that main sequence is the stable part, the forces are balanced and it stays in that for billions of years. And then if you remember, the star here can either go down two different pathways. Well, if it's a similar size to the sun, it goes down this pathway. If it's larger, it goes down this path. So the larger one is given the name red supergiant so that implies in its name that it's even bigger so that'll help you remember a red supergiant is for stars that are bigger than our sun we've then got the supers staying together the red supergiant makes the supernova the explosion that creates all those heavy elements so the supers stay together and on the other side a couple of tips is that after the red giant star you end up with the white dwarf and then the black dwarf and remember those two stay together on the same side. So just a couple of little tips that might help you remember some of this sequence and hopefully that will help you for your exam.